Before interest rates went up, I didn't look at it twice either. But now with some GIC rates as high as 5.95%, definitely consider. GICs or Guaranteed Investment Certificates, which we're going to talk about today, are one of the most basic investment products that you definitely need to know about. And I know people say investment, investing, that's risky. Yeah, that's true. Every investment has a risk, but I'd say that GICs belong to the category of products that have the lowest risk level. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what GICs are, how they work, the different types of GICs some things that you may want to consider also in terms of risk when opening a GIC and I'll also lastly talk about the GIC ladder which is a method that you can use to make the most out of GICs. Just in case you've heard of CDs or Certificate of Deposits as they have them in the States or Term Deposits, GICs are pretty similar to CDs and also Term Deposits with some very subtle differences. GICs as an investment are very interesting at the moment because of the current interest environment. As you know, over the last year until now, interest rates have steadily gone up and at the moment the BOC or the Bank of Canada rate is at 5% which is super high if you compare that to the years before. In 2022, the rate was as low as 3.25% and in April 2022, even as low as 1%. So it's just crazy by how much it has gone up. So interest rates going up, is it good or not? It can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're trying to do. I'm sure you guys know or in case you don't know, the BOC or Bank of Canada rate influences the cost of lending and borrowing. It will influence what it costs for you to borrow money. For example, if you get a car loan, a personal loan or a mortgage uh, with interest now being much, much higher. But the upside is that if you are the one who has money to invest, if you lend it to a bank, so to speak, you will also be earning a much higher interest rate. Anyways, now what exactly is a GIC or a Guaranteed Investment Certificate? A GIC is an investment that offers a guaranteed return for a fixed period of time. Now let's break this down. The first very important characteristic is that GICs offer a guaranteed return. For a certain GIC product, a bank or a financial institution will offer you X percent interest for a certain amount of money depending on how long your money is invested. So let's say for example you have $1,000 and you invest that into a GIC and that particular bank offers 5% for a 1% GIC. That means that at the end of the year you will receive $50 or 5% of $1,000 as interest, which brings you to a total value of your investment of $1,050. So the great thing about the interest being guaranteed is that unlike other types of investments, it is not subject to market fluctuations, to what happens in the economy. If your money is locked into a GIC for a certain time frame, whether that's one year, three years, five years, as long as your money is in that GIC, you are guaranteed that fixed percentage of interest. If you put your money into a stock, it could be worth $20 at the beginning of the year and then at the end of the year, it's down to $60. $16. And so in that sense, a stock does not offer a guaranteed return. But that being said, it doesn't mean that GICs are completely risk free. GICs do not have risk when it comes to the return. The return is guaranteed, but they do have other types of risks, which I will talk about later. So the first benefit is guaranteed return. The second benefit is that the GIC is protected. So let's say you invested $1,000 in bank A and the bank suddenly goes bust for whatever reason. Uh, the great news is that your money is not gone because your money up to a certain amount is protected. Protected by whom? By the CDIC. The CDIC is the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation and as the name says, this corporation protects your deposits. What kind of deposits? Let's get into that. So here it says what's covered under the CDIC, deposits in Canadian or foreign currency, guaranteed investment certificates, GICs and other term deposits. What's not covered? 
are mutual fund stocks bonds etfs and cryptocurrencies and i think that makes a lot of sense so how much of your money or your gic or your other investment products does the cdic protect Kirt says that the cdic protects eligible deposits held at each of our member institutions up to a maximum of $100,000 per separately insured category. So this is very important to note. So let's say that your deposits are held under one name. The CDIC will protect, insure these deposits up to $100,000 separate from other categories. So here's a very brief example. Let's say you have $20,000 in a GIC, and then you have $40,000 in a term deposit, and then $25,000 in a savings account, $25,000 in a checking account. So all these four products here, uh, these categories are protected by the CDIC. The total amount that is protected in this category, so deposits held under your name, only goes up to $100,000. Yeah, so that was just a quick detour. So you know that, yes, your money is safe in a GIC within these limits. Now let's talk a bit about how a GIC works. So when you open a GIC with a financial institution, which could be a bank, it basically means that you are lending money to the bank or to the financial institution. If you turn it around, it means the bank is borrowing money from you. And of course, there is a cost to borrowing money. The cost of borrowing this money from you is the interest rate that you receive, and it will depend, among others, on how long the term of the GIC is. It can usually range anywhere from a few months up to several years, usually up to five years. And of course, the GIC rates will differ from bank to bank. So guys, I'd like to go into some examples. So here on this blog, woa.ca, uh, there's a really great summary of GIC rates uh, for the month of September 2023. And note here that there's a category of non-registered rate and registered or TFSA rate. So if you are not putting your money into a registered account, then you can refer to the non-registered rate. So here you can see, for example, that this bank here um, offers a GIC rate of 5.10% for a five-year GIC term. And this institution here, for example, offers 3.35% for a six months term, 5.2% for one year term, 5% for a five year term. The interest rate does not necessarily always go up for a longer term. And over here, you can also select whether you want a non-redeemable GIC or a redeemable GIC. And I will get to that in a moment. So as you can see, many financial institutions at the moment offer GIC rates of over 5% for just a one year term. So over here, you can see that this bank offers a GIC rate of 5.95%, which means if you have $1,000 at the end of the year, you can expect to have $1,059.50. Now, I want to talk a bit about the different types of GICs because there are redeemable and non-redeemable ones. But before we continue with that, I need to tell you about this really awesome credit card, the new secured credit card. And this will be especially useful to those of you who are new here in Canada and do not have any prior credit history here in Canada, or for those of you who are simply having some challenges getting a regular credit card. NEO is a Canadian financial institution that is 100% digital, and they have this great product, the NEO Secured Credit Card. It works like a normal credit card. The difference is that your credit limit is based on what's called your security funds. If, for example, you set aside $500 as your security funds with them, then your credit limit will be $500. And you can start with as little as just $50, which makes this card even more accessible. And guys, there are three awesome things about this card that will not only save you time, but also money. Even as a newcomer to Canada, you can immediately apply for the NEO Secured Credit Card as approval is guaranteed. No waiting until you reach a certain income level. NEO does also not require a credit check, so it doesn't matter if you do not have prior credit history here in Canada, although you do need to be a Canadian resident and have a Canadian ID. Another great thing is that there are no monthly or annual fees, because why would you ever want to pay annual fees for a credit card? And you can even earn an average 5% cash back at over 10,000 NEO partners across the country. But best of all, you even get a sign up bonus of $25 when you sign up for a Neo Secured credit card using my affiliate link in the descriptions below. 
So thank you, Nail, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now let's continue to talk about the different types of GICs. And basically, there are two types of GICs. There are redeemable GICs and non-redeemable GICs. Redeemable GICs basically allow you to withdraw money before the end of the maturity date, which of course allows you more flexibility. And then there's what's called non-redeemable GICs, where you can only access your money at the end of the maturity. If we just quickly compare, for example, the GIC rate here uh, for a one year GIC, 5.1% from this bank and compare it against a GIC from the same bank for the same term one year, uh, you only get 2.7%. And it makes completely sense. If the GIC is redeemable, meaning that at any point in time, without any announcement, you can just withdraw your money, then of course, it's kind of a higher risk for the bank because they do not know exactly what to expect and do not know when people will get their money. And because of that, at least I think that's one of the reasons they offer you a lower interest rate. But anyways, let's not worry about the bank's risk, but let's talk about our own risk, your risk when you purchase a GIC. What risk are you actually taking on, if any? So when you purchase a GIC, there is no risk in terms of the return because the return is guaranteed, right? But you are taking on different kinds of risk. You are taking on one liquidity risk and also a risk of paying penalties. So let's say that you're putting $5,000 into a three year GIC because you're thinking, hmm, I think during these three years, I'll not really need to access the money. I can just leave it in there and let the money work for me. So you decide to put it in a non-redeemable GIC because that gives you a higher return. But then after one and a half years, all of the sudden, um, you lose your job in the worst case, or there's a medical emergency and you find out, oh shoot, I really need this money. I need to get at least two or $3,000 out of my GIC. So there you have it. There you have the risk of liquidity because the investment is not really liquid. I mean, of course, you could force break it and withdraw the money anyway, but then you'll likely be subject to a penalty. If GICs are right for you, it is very important that you carefully consider the different time horizons. Which time horizon, which GIC terms actually meet your needs? Also, when you sign up for a GIC, make sure that you read the terms and conditions very carefully, read how much the interest rate is and when it is paid. Is it paid at the end of the term? How often is it? Is it compounded? Usually it's compounded annually. Is it redeemable or not redeemable? Uh, does it automatically renew? In the case that it automatically renews, you have to remember that if you do not want to renew it, you need to uh, notify the bank far in advance. I think, I think something like a month or so before the GIC uh, matures. And also, if you're purchasing a non-redeemable GIC, make sure that you read what the penalties are for breaking it. So what do I personally think of GICs? I personally love GICs because they offer stability, uh, security, and a guaranteed return. Whether you are saving for a down payment for a home or for your next vacation or um, children's education or for your retirement, I think that GICs could be or let's say GICs are a valuable addition to my portfolio. So what I do and what you could consider, not that I'm telling you what you should do, this is not financial advice, but what I like to do is to put my money in my RSP so that I can deduct taxes and the money can grow tax free and then I invest that money into a GIC. So if I put 1000 into my RSP and the $1,000 I put in a GIC and I earn 5%, let's say, so $50, uh, those $50, that income will not be taxed as long as I keep the money in the RSP. Okay, guys, now let's get to the promised and most exciting uh, section of this video, which is talking about the GIC ladder. So the GIC ladder is a well-known method that can help you to make the most of GICs. So uh, possibly get the highest return, but at the same time, also manage some of that liquidity risk that comes from not being able to access your money um, until the end of the term. And for that, I'm going to go to this blog, Nerd Wallet, which by the way, has awesome content. Um, in this article, the GIC ladder is explain a clever way to maximize your investment. A GIC ladder staggers the maturity dates of your guaranteed investment certificates so you can take advantage of the long-term interest rates. 
And let's skip directly to the example. So let's say you have $25,000 now. I know that is a lot. Most people do not have that much money lying around, but for this example, let's just say you have $25,000 and you are wondering how to invest it. Uh, you've decided you want to put $25,000 in your GIC. I'm assuming this person does not only have $25,000, they maybe also have $75,000 and are putting it in something else, but they decided they want to put $25,000 in a GIC. So option one, they could put the entire $25,000 into a one GIC with let's say a term of three years, right? And because they want the highest interest rate, they pick a non-redeemable one. But the problem is that it limits their access to the funds and it makes them very, very illiquid and unflexible. So instead of doing that, there's the solution on the GIC ladder where they can break up this amount, this $25,000 and put it into different pockets, into different GICs with different terms. You can do it at different banks, at the same bank, but I would say that it's easier to get a good overview if you do that with one bank online. So let's say you split the 25,000 up into five pockets. You put uh, one amount of $5,000 into a GIC with a one year term. And let's say that one year GIC um, earns you 4.5%. So after the end of one year, you simply reinvest the $5,000 again. The benefit of doing this is that after the end of each year, if you decide that you really need the money to use it for something else, you can simply access it after that one year and there will not be a penalty. Next, you would put your next $5,000 into another GIC that has a term of let's say two years. And this one, because it's slightly longer, has a higher interest rate here for for example, the GIC rate is 4.75%. So you benefit from a higher return. The downside is that the money stays in that GIC longer. And then you go on and do the same with the remaining uh, three $5,000 buckets. So you put the $5,000 into a three-year GIC, $5,000 into a four-year GIC, $5,000 into a five-year GIC. So the benefit is that if you combine the interest across these different GICs, um, in total, you would get a higher return overall than if you would just put everything into a one-year GIC. But at the same time, you can also enjoy some flexibility because at the end of each year, one of these GICs will definitely mature, uh, the term will come to an end, and you can access the money without any penalty. So guys, have any of you ever invested in a GIC before? Or if you've done something similar in another country, have you invested in term deposits or CDs before? Are you planning to purchase a GIC if you're already in Canada? If yes, why? If not, why not? I'd really love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And if you want to hear more from me, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, very important, hit the notification bell, because only if you do that will YouTube actually notify you whenever there's a new video from me as always thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you pretty soon in the next video bye